today we're going to be tackling the question of can you please put the 2023 F1 drivers into a tier list? And the answer to that, of course, is yes, I can. A home's near you. Right, there we go. We've got Daniel Ricciardo, we've got Liam Lawson in. We're going to go ahead and rank the 2023 F1 drivers based on their performance. We're going to use a variety of metrics, but most important of those metrics is going to be my opinion of how they got on throughout the season. I'm going to do it in the order that I see it in front of me now. Let's just go for it, shall we? So the first one we've got to do is, of course, Mr. Alexander Albon on of Williams. This one's a tricky one to rank because on the whole he's had a really, really, really good season and um, he's bashed Logan Sargent in qualifying, actually the only driver on the grid to whitewash their teammate in qualifying and he got the bulk of Williams points. I think Sargent only ended up with one point and Alex came 13th with 27 points. 27 points in a Williams. I mean, it's a borderline S with Alex, and you know what? I'm going to put him in S tier. Alex has scored 27 points to one in a Williams car, which, yes, it's got great straight line speed, but it's not a world beater. So I'm going to be kind for now. Of course, this is subject to change, and I'm going to say that Alex Albon's had an S tier season. The next man needs no debate whatsoever. Fernando Alonso is going straight in S. He said it himself, this is his best season ever alongside the 2012 season where of course he dragged that Ferrari to places it never should have got and he's dragged this Aston Martin to places that Lance Stroll clearly couldn't get it to. Um, destroyed Stroll in qualifying, Stroll in qualifying, 17 for race and 19-3 qualifying. Huge percentage of Aston Martin's points being garnered by Fernando who is aging like a fine wine, a stunning, a stunning season that run of podiums at the start where the podium every weekend was Max, Sergio and Fernando. Just fantastic. Shame that the Aston Martin tailed off, but whenever he needed to be there to get points, he was there and he did get said points. It's an S-tier season for Fernando Alonso, so we're off to a great start. Two S's. The next man, Valtteri Bottas in the Alfa Romeo. I haven't been impressed, uh, to put it bluntly, with either Alfa Romeo driver, but certainly not with Bottas. I don't think that Zhou Guanyu is a uh, prodigious talent. I, I don't think that Zhou Guanyu is going to be a world beater. I don't think he's going to be a multiple race winner at any point. And yet Bottas is, yes, he's getting the better of him, but he's not blowing him out the water. The same for Zhou Guanyu needs to be beating Bottas week in, week out to prove himself. Bottas needs to be beating Zhou week in, week out to prove himself. 12-9 in the race. In qualifying, it was a little bit more comfortable. 15-6 to Bottas. And the amount of times we've seen Valtteri Bottas have an anonymous race, as you see, I've just knocked him into sea there. He just would be nowhere trundling around in 19th. Abu Dhabi, a perfect example of this. I'm not impressed by Valtteri Bottas. I'm putting him in the C tier. Moving on to Nick De Vries. Not much that needs to be said here. Had a torrid time of it. Crash after crash. Incident after incident. Finished 22nd in a 20-man championship doesn't get much worse than that one of the worst Formula 1 seasons in recent memory um, and then booted out and replaced by Liam Lawson and then Daniel Ricciardo um, halfway through the season an absolute nightmare for Nick De Vries. Um, perhaps that showing for Williams was a one-off in the Italian Grand Prix last year. But yeah, not good. D tier, and he's going to be the bottom of the D tier. Also, something that I'm going to do quickly is move Fernando above Alex because he's had a better season. Moving on now to Pierre Gasly. Really impressed with Pierre Gasly. Has come into that Alpine team against uh, Ocon, who's been there for a while. Beaten Ocon in the championship just. Um, he got a podium, as did Ocon. And basically, those two were super... Super evenly matched. He got a third place, of course. Head to head in qualifying, he beat Ocon and only won behind Ocon in the race head to head, but also crucially beating him in the championship by four points, as you can see there. I'm going to put him in the A tier. I think a lot of people are expecting him to struggle in that Alpine. 
up against Ocon. Not a great season for the team, of course, but for Gasly himself, um, I'm really impressed. Next up is Lewis Hamilton, who has had a bit of a, an under-the-radar sort of season this year in that Mercedes that hasn't performed particularly well. But Hamilton defeated Russell very comfortably, got the sizable margin of Mercedes points. I mean, I do think he's in a bit of a decline. Uh, there's a few uncharacteristic incidents this season, turning in on George Russell, undersuing in Sergio Perez, but that's possibly down to the car as well, not doing what he needed to do. Um, still third in the championship overall in that car is a great job. Challenged Perez before falling away towards the end for that second place in the championship. I'm giving him the A tier. It's a very, very solid, underrated and quietly impressive season from Lewis Hamilton. Next up, we've got Nico Ulkenberg and uh, it's a difficult one this um, he's had a really good season to a point uh, that point being qualifying destroying Kevin Magnussen for the most part and making his teammate look rather amateur however in the races has dropped back it's hard to say how much of that is down to that Haas being so bad on its tyres so naturally would qualify brilliantly and then slip back so it's hard to grade his races themselves up until recently i think i would have nudged him into the a tier however um, recently kevin magnuson came back at him and they were a bit more evenly matched over the last sort of five six races of the season still a very impressive season by hulkenberg not quite an a tier in my opinion though so i'm gonna put nico hulkenberg as i have done there into the B tier, but he destroyed Magnussen. The next is Max Verstappen, and if you'll give me a second, I'm just going to do something quickly. This has been the single greatest season by any Formula One driver in the history of the sport. It doesn't feel right to put Max Verstappen in the S tier in the same league as any other driver, even in the league of Fernando Alonso. He needs to go a tier above every other driver. Astonishing. The most wins in a season ever, the most amount of wins in a row ever. He's also got the highest win percentage in a season, the highest percentage of points. Uh, in a season, getting something like 94% of all the points on offer. Moved up to third in the all-time race-winning rankings. What is there to say about Max Verstappen? Just managed to execute every race perfectly. Even those Grand Prix, like the Dutch Grand Prix, where it poured it down with rain. The Las Vegas Grand Prix, where George Russell turned into him, got him damaged. He also got a five-second penalty at the start of the Grand Prix. And yet he still wins. Even in those moments where, in seasons gone by, we would say, well, this is a great leveller, the rain's a great leveller. But because if you level the field, you simply give him another chance to prove that he's the best driver on the grid. And there is no doubt that Max Verstappen is the best driver on the Formula One grid this season and has been, I think, for the last five seasons now. He's absolutely unbelievable. Those who say it's just the car, well, look at Sergio Perez. Max could have won the Constructors' Championship on his own. Perez has been nowhere near him for large parts of the season. He's struggled to get to grips with the car. Max has been on top of it the whole time. Um, I believe there's not a single driver in the field that if you drop them into that Red Bull seat next to him would be able to beat him or even get that close. I really do think he's that good. He has been that dominant. It's the greatest Formula One season of all time by a single driver. He has to go in a tier above anybody else. Well done, Max Verstappen. There's nothing more to say. Charles Leclerc next then in the Ferrari. This is a kind of hard one to rank as well because when the victory was there for Ferrari, it was Carlos Sainz who got it. But for the most part, he has been the lead Ferrari driver in what has been a pretty disappointing and underwhelming season for Ferrari. The mistakes are still there. We saw it, for example, in Miami. He does lose control of the car. He does push too hard sometimes. But there are also examples where that works brilliantly because they're fantastic pole position laps over, I mean, recently towards the end of the season where he was dragging that car onto the front row where it didn't really belong, putting in fantastic laps, of course, not often able to stay at the front because the Ferrari also, like the Haas, wasn't great 
on its tyres. But I don't think his season has been good as Pierre Ga as good as Pierre Gasly or Lewis Hamilton's has. So I'm going to give him the B, but I'm going to put him above Nico Hulkenberg there. Charles Leclerc in the B row. Hard one to rank because Ferrari really have dropped the ball this season. Next up, we've got Kevin Magnussen, who's had a very torrid season, I would say. He's been destroyed mostly by Hulkenberg. Hulkenberg getting way more points and destroying him in qualifying. Um, I'm afraid it's the D-Row. Better season than Nick DeVries, but by the standards that we expect from Kevin Magnussen, it's got to be D-Tier. Not good enough, and he's got to improve next year. He started to get somewhere close toward the end of the season, but not close enough. D tier, Kevin Magnussen. Moving on now to Lando Norris, another difficult one to rank because the McLaren started off the year terribly. But whenever there's been an opportunity to take a second place, a third place, get on the podium, Lando Norris has taken it. There's been some mistakes in qualifying over the last couple of races, but on the whole, Lando Norris had a fabulous season. He's just showing the kind of ability and talent he's got. Uh, he's right on the cusp between S and A. Same with Alex Albon, but I'm going to put Lando Norris in the S tier because he's beaten his very impressive rookie, Oscar Piastri, who's also had a great season, extracted the most out of that McLaren whenever he possibly could. He was never going to beat Max Verstappen in any of the races, really, but whenever he had a chance to stick it second or third, he took it. He always had the race pace edge over Oscar Piastri, if not always able to execute in qualifying. Really impressed with Lando. He deserves a race winning car. Let's hope he gets it soon. I'm giving Lando the S tier. Esteban Ocon, who's had a very similar season to his teammate, but he is the established man in that team. He's been there for a long time now and Gasly was able to get the better of him in the championship and in the qualifying head-to-head -head as well. I've been much more impressed with Gasly than I have been Ocon, although it's still a pretty solid season for Ocon. He's going in the B row because, I, as I say, Gasly going there and doing what he's done up against Ocon is more impressive. You know, the fact that those two have pretty much drawn means that Gasly's had a better season simply because he's coming into that team fresh and cold. Moving on now to Sergio Perez, the man who's finished second in the championship, giving Red Bull, I believe, their first ever 1-2. Who can believe that? It's been an up and down season for Sergio, who started so well, and we were talking about, can he take the fight to Max Verstappen? They shared the first four race wins, two each. And since then, it's just fallen off a cliff. Of course, had that barren run midway through the season where about five or six races in a row, he didn't make Q3 in the fastest car on the grid. I mean, look at what Max has done with it. Perez was not able to compete at all. And also some clumsy races. I mean, uh, Suzuka, I saw a list of car, uh, drivers that have caused the most damage to their car in terms of cost. Perez was in the top three for that as well. So despite finishing second, he's only just been able to beat Lewis Hamilton and it was close between those two. It should never have been that close. And he's finishing 20, 30 seconds behind his teammate and has half as many points. And his teammate could have won the Constructor Championship on his own. It's harsh, it's between B and C, but I'm gonna be harsh. I'm gonna save C. He should be getting better results in that car. And since the start of the season, he's tailed off and actually had probably his worst season up against Max in that car. Next up, we've got Oscar Piastri, who I've been super impressed with, super impressed in his rookie season, taking a sprint victory and also being right there or thereabouts with Lando Norris, certainly in qualifying. In the race, he struggled a bit with tyre warm-up and uh, just generally staying on Lando's pace, but he's a rookie, come on, it's his first season, and he's managed to get several podiums and be really close to Lando, top of the A row for the super impressive rookie Oscar Piastri. Next, we've got George Russell, disappointing. He beat Lewis Hamilton in his first season, deservedly so. Only got two podiums this year at Spanish Grand Prix and the season close at Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. It was his drive that actually secured Mercedes uh, that second place because Hamilton was nowhere. But generally across the season, Hamilton's been comfortably the stronger driver. Russell hasn't been able to get close to his teammate really. 
and yeah disappointing and he said it himself it's one of his worst seasons of his career in any category of motorsport eighth in the championship 175 points compared to lewis hamilton's 234 that's a sizable sizable margin and for that reason george russell's going in the c and i actually think perez has had a better season than george russell moving on to carlos sainz who of course had that stretch in the middle of the season where he was on top of Charles Leclerc and he was the one who took the only non-Red Bull race win which has to count for something but overall I think Charles has been the better driver between the two so what I'm going to do is shove signs in the B right next to Charles not ahead of him I'd put Charles ahead of ahead of Carlos just very evenly matched the championship battle between the two could have gone either way Charles drove brilliantly in Abu Dhabi and Carlos was nowhere and that's what cost him the opportunity to beat uh, Charles and also finish fourth in the championship. Very evenly matched season for the two Ferraris and not a very good season for the team in general. He got the race win, he got a few podiums and when Ferrari were at their quickest it was Carlos Sainz who got the most out of the car. However, as I say, throughout the season, Charles gets the nod for me. So it's B tier for Carlos. Moving on to Logan Sargent now. He's the latest man to receive the D from me, but it's not a good thing. And, I mean, most people would probably say it wasn't a good thing anyway, but it's definitely not for Logan because he's going in the D. Not great. I am going to put him above Nick DeVries, but yeah, he's been destroyed. 21st in the championship, a 20-man championship for Logan Sargent, who was top of that list I mentioned before of most damage caused in terms of cost to their car. Whitewashed by Alex Albon, only got one point. He was finishing nowhere near Alex in the race. I think there was a race, um, possibly Qatar, where Alex finished closer to Max than he, Logan did to him which is just a, such a damning stat. If I was Williams, I'd be looking elsewhere. No future in this lad, in my opinion. Similarly, Lance Stroll is only in the seat because of daddy's money. I'm going to put him above Logan Sargent. I'm going to put him above, yeah, I'm going to put him above Kevin Magnussen as well as the king of the Ds, but he's still a D. When Alonso was scraping those points uh, when Aston were nowhere, Lance Stroll was finishing 19th and was miles off the pace. Towards the end of the season, he started to get a bit closer to Fernando. He had a couple of races where he was able to beat Fernando. Uh, Las Vegas was a standout performance from Stroll, the only one of the year, really. A barren year, a terrible year. He's not good enough to be in Formula One, and he's only there because of his daddy's money. But I'm standing by it. He's not good enough. Yuki Tsunoda, who's hard to rank at the start of the season, he had those that run of P11s where you're thinking, you're so unlucky, Yuki. If there was one DNF, you'd get a point. Destroyed Nick DeVries of course but that's not really saying much against Liam Lawson though it was too close for comfort between those two and the fact that Lawson walked into the seat and was able to mix it with Yuki and beat him on quite a few occasions is a bit worrying for Sonoda but he picked it up and had the marginal edge over Daniel Ricciardo towards the end of the season I think it's been a pretty decent year still a few mistakes still a few anonymous days but I'm gonna put him in the B, um, Sonoda's going in B, not a great season, not a terrible season, some really good moments, I mean Abu Dhabi was a great drive, was leading for a bit, he had a few decent drives actually this season, uh, but also as I say a few where he was nowhere near the pace. Zhou Guan Yu, yeah, um, he's going in the C, he needs to start beating Bottas, just very meh, very mid, very C for Guan Yu Zhou. Um, not much more to say. Quite a few anonymous races and not bringing home as many points as Bottas. Just Daniel Ricciardo on his return. Like he's not had many races. Was super unlucky to, of course, have that injury in the Dutch Grand Prix. But overall, it's not been a fantastic stellar return. He had that Mexico-Austin kind of run where he was finishing sort of P5, 6, 7 and, and it was like, wow, okay, Ricardo's back. And then he sort of slipped away and Yuki got the better of him again over the last couple of races. Daniel has had a C-tier season. It's just hard to rank. He's not had enough races. And finally, Liam Lawson. I mean, again, didn't get many races, but in the races he did get, he was largely beating Yuki. Uh, quite an impressive one. Um, unlucky not to get the seat and he's not as marketable as Daniel Ricciardo. Didn't really get enough races to have a standout interim period 
but a very solid one nonetheless. It's borderline A, but it would be pr pretty preposterous to put him in the A tier. I'm going to put him in the B tier. So there you go, guys. That is my 2023 F1 drivers tier list. Let me know down in the comments what you think of that. Do you disagree? And if you have any beef, please start it because it's interaction, isn't it? Do subscribe if you enjoy. I'll do some more tier lists. Have a great day or night, whatever time it is now that you're watching this. Cheers.